What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Brick Builder. I am Alex, and I just wanted to say thank you all for joining us for this brand new segment, Q&A, where you all ask questions in our comments on our YouTube videos and on Instagram, and we're going to start answering them for you here on a weekly basis. And I just got to say I'm very thankful for being able to get back to our normal routine schedule where we can build and talk more and it's not so much centered around the world's largest lego giveaway as much fun as that was it was truly amazing it was life-changing for 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 not just myself and my channel but for the winners as well so so again congratulations to all the winners but today we're going to be answering a lot of your questions and to start things off, and I apologize if I mispronounce your user tag, I really don't mean it, but Bastian VZ. Please correct me if I mispronounced that because I'm pretty sure I did. Asks, what is the first Lego set that you had and do you still have it now? I don't really remember what my first Lego set was, mainly because I'm pretty certain I got it when I was a little, little kid, uh, 20 some plus years ago, and betting odds that it was probably a very small set, because uh, that's kind of all we could afford. However, I do remember getting my favorite Lego set as a child. It was the Fort Legorado set. I still do have it in my spare time and in my free time. I'm working on piecing it back together so I can build it. And then when I move into my new Lego room, my goal is to be able to display it. But Fort Legorado is probably the first Lego set I can remember having as a kid. And boy, I remember building that thing, reenacting war battles and destroying it with cannons and stuff and then rebuilding it back up. I probably did that a thousand times as a kid. That has always been uh, a very fond memory of mine. So thank you for that question. At Galactic Unicorn 13, first off, fantastic tag. What are some of your favorite music, movies, and TV shows? So, this is a good one because I don't really talk too much about this. So, I'm going to start with TV shows. I have a handful of favorites. One, The Office is my all time favorite TV show. I watch it on repeat. I love Parks and Rec. I love that 70s show. Those three are probably my three top favorite. TV shows, I watch them on a loop. When one gets done, I start another one. And I usually always have those on as background noise in my house. Uh, movies, my all-time favorite movies are National Treasure, the whole one and two, even the Amazon Prime special. I just grew up loving National Treasure. I, I think I have the first movie completely memorized. Um, but... Other than that, it's very there's a very big drop off in my favorite movies. I will say one kind of strange one that I really do enjoy because I was a film student uh, in college and one of the movies I grew to love because of writing and producing film was the structure and the design of this film. It's called The Life of David Gale. Uh, I think it's absolutely brilliant. If you're old enough, I suggest you should definitely check it out because it is just a really good movie to watch. It's very suspenseful. There's, there is a uh, very, very high peak climat climatic ending, lots of loops, lots of turns, mind blowing kind of stuff. Really enjoy that. It's kind of a murder mystery type of film. Love that. And when it comes to music, I actually love country music. I enjoy all music. Uh, my wife and I, when we're cooking dinner, we love to play 90s music, early 2000s, and our kids look at us like we're crazy because we're singing and dancing to them. But I do love country music the most. Uh, when I moved to Nashville, my goal was to work with artists and produce videos for them. And I was fortunate enough to be somewhat successful. I got to travel all over the country with a number of very famous artists and go on tour with them and create a lot of cool content and videos for them so i would have to say my favorite music is definitely country the cfop guy asks what is your favorite lego set 
Favorite current Lego set, honestly, would probably be Bowser. I mean, he he's... I did not love this set at first. It really grew on me, and I eventually bought it. I loved the build. So much fun. It was extremely challenging with the Technic side of things, but it was. it's honestly the sleekest, smoothest Lego set I've ever seen or built, and I just think it looks amazing. It's got interactive parts where he shoots fire, he moves his head, all that stuff. Absolutely love that. My kids love it. And I think because of my kids loving it as well, I think that's a big reason why I really love it. In a close second that I own is probably the Home Alone set. That was a very, very fun build. But I feel like my favorite one often changes uh, as I continue to grow my, my Lego setup. So I'd say currently right now, I'd have to give the nod to Bowser. I also love the Disney camera. You can't go wrong with the Lion Knight's Castle. You got all the modulars. I mean, it's difficult to pick just one, but if I had to choose, I would probably say Bowser. He's so cool. At Lorraine Casillas326 says, How do I start a Lego city? Do I buy sets or make my own? How did you start? I would suggest you start buying modulars and learning those techniques. I didn't build my first one. As you can see, that maroonish one in the back corner. I started building that after I built about eight or nine of the modulars. And even then, it was very difficult because you learn so much from the way that the professionals build these modulars that you can then start to take those into designing your own. And I think if I would have designed one from the start compared to what I would do now, even though I've only been hard collecting for a couple of years, I think it would be a major difference. And because with the price of Lego going up, I, I really believe that there's a lot of planning and prep that goes into building your own Lego city, uh, especially your own mocks where you can use studio and really get that piece count dialed in so you don't overspend on those. But I highly suggest starting Lego City. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work and a lot of upkeep. But it's really cool to see your designs and your imagination bring it to life. So thank you for that question. At Jeff Skirkus, have you heard anyone successfully getting a Star Wars Lego store display? I keep seeing the Target one with the helmets and I'm thinking it would look great in my collection. Actually, Jeff... Yes, I have seen a number of people, not that I personally know, but people that I've seen online talking about this. And a lot of them comes down to a couple, a couple different options. Most people say if you go up to a Target employee and ask for their manager and kind of walk them to that Lego area and ask them if you can buy that, a lot of the times they will. I believe most of these Targets usually throw the displays out once they're done, or they kind of put them on sale or very high discount for employees to be able to purchase. And if nobody does, then they just throw it out. So I think if you go to a Target and you ask for a manager or somebody who, who can answer that question, I wouldn't be surprised if you could ask them if you could buy it. They may even just give it to you. Uh, but that's where I would start because that's where I've seen a lot of people say they've had some success. At Agent Ogre 9131 his question, are you at all experienced in investing? And if so, do you see any of the March releases as possible big hits? So very good question. And I actually just spoke to a friend of mine who's in the Lego uh, about Lego investing. And there's a couple different viewpoints on this. First off, I don't invest too much into Lego. I'm not like a big Lego investor. I, I think... It's very much hit or miss. Obviously, like things with like Star Wars or something, you're you're going to get more bang for your buck when it comes to investing. But a lot of the other ones, you know, once those sets get retired, they they usually skyrocket in price. I personally don't buy sets to invest in them. I typically will buy clearance sets that I find extremely discounted and flip them, meaning I'll buy them for four or five dollars uh, at like a Kroger Marketplace or Target or Walmart clearance section, and I'll in immediately turn around and put it on Marketplace or eBay. And I don't 
put the price tag outrageous. I just try to get really face value for it. Um, that's pretty much to the length of my investing. I have a lot in my backlog that I could probably be technically investing in, but it's really just because I haven't built them yet. So I don't have a ton of experience in it. However, I do see some of these March releases being possibly big hits, especially these Star Wars ones with these commemorative, commemorative minifigures. I think once these get taken off the shelves, unopened boxes of those will go for at least double what they're going for now. I think the Snow White Cottage will be a very valuable set within five to 10 years. And other than that, you know, I don't get too much into the investing, mainly because I don't want to buy a Lego set and sit on it for five years. But at the same time, I also don't have the money in my budget to spend on Lego sets and then hold it and not build them and, and provide content for my current viewers. Uh, I know that's kind of backwards thinking because anything with investing, it's all about long term. So I really just don't look at Lego as... I, I don't look at Lego investing as such a high priority in my life. I posted a video not too long ago about burning my boxes and a lot of people came back at me saying you, you can't burn the boxes because you lose so much value on the secondary market. And for me, that's not a big deal. I don't plan on selling any of these. I plan on giving all of these to my kids when I no longer play with them. Uh, so that's kind of my outlook on the investing. I think it's a good thing, but... I, I just don't partake too much in it right now. However, that may be something that I regret later, but it is what it is. Again, my solid belief is Lego is meant to be played with, and that's kind of how my mindset is working towards it right now. But if you're looking to invest, I, I wish you all the luck, and hopefully you strike it huge. That would be really cool. At DJLoo999B3, his question is, do you think Lego is dropping more Lord of the Rings sets and do you like the spoiled new Barad Dur? I, I do believe they will be dropping more Le Lord of the Rings sets. I think it's a very popular brand and it may not be as big as Star Wars, but it could definitely get to that length or it could get to that size. I don't know if it'll ever reach Star Wars, uh, but I do think Lord of the Rings sets are going to become more popular in the near future. As for Barad Dur, if I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize. I'm very questionable about this one. I've seen a lot of images of it, and I just, when you compare it to like the Rivendell set with all the colors and, and just, it's a beautiful display. I think Barad Dur, it, it's going to be heavy on the black and not as visually aesthetic as something like Rivendell. Now, that being said, I could be completely wrong and it could be absolutely amazing, which I'm not going to knock it. I probably will eventually buy it, but I I don't think Barad Dur is going to live up to all the hype that I've seen. That's just my opinion. At VJVJ2586, his question is, what is your process when cleaning all of the sets you have? I know they can get very dusty if not taken care of properly. My man, you are absolutely right. Dusting sucks and I hate it. I have a little brush that I, I took from my wife, her makeup brush, and I dust occasionally in very open and clear spots. I don't get into the cracks or anything like that. There are some brands out there that have created almost like lego vacuums i've actually been in touch with one i'm waiting for them they're they're going to be sending me one and i can't wait to test it out and do a full review on it because my lego sets are filthy and i hate it it drives me nuts but i've not found any other better way to really clean them off i mean it you, you got to spend a lot of time and do it frequently so Unfortunately, I don't have a better answer for you, but hopefully in the near future, I can. At DrakeMaster11, what is your all-time favorite LEGO UCS set? Any theme? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, I'm not even familiar with every LEGO USC set. I'm really only familiar with the Star Wars ones, but... 
Cool. I would probably say if I had an unlimited budget to pick any USC set, I would probably do the ATAT. -AT. I just, I think that thing is massive and it looks really cool. But I don't know. The the price for USC sets kind of turns me off. I I would rather buy you know four or five sets than just one large one. So at Jack Cummins. What is my favorite color? My favorite color is green. And that is why I love very bright oriented sets of Lego because when they include a lot of green, it just makes me happy. Uh, I think the color green, it just screams springtime, summertime, and that makes me super happy. And I honestly feel like it releases a lot of stress of my life. Uh, as much green as I possibly can, I try to work in. Also, for those of you who noticed and have gotten on me for building the bonsai tree and not using the pink leaves, again, it's because I love the green. So my second favorite color would probably be blue, but I, I try to stick heavily on green. At Scott Denton, 3023, how many sets do you have that are not open and any plans to build them? Yeah, I have about 15 sets currently not opened. I plan on building at least 10 of them. Uh, the ones that I'm not buying, I either have bought in for my daughter or my son that we've not given them yet. They were kind of sets that I saw on sale and I purchased them so I wouldn't miss out. And we're kind of waiting for them to have some sort of an achievement, whether it's at school or life, like potty training, all that stuff. We'll give them a set and let them build it for that or birthdays or Christmas or something like that. But I have about 10 sets of my own in my backlog that I've just not built yet, mainly because I haven't had the time and because there's just a lot of stuff in life going on. And for our final question of the day comes from at Murtaz Seed3392. I apologize if I butchered that. Uh, he asks, is Winnie the Pooh worth it at full price? It's retired in my area, but Amazon's got stock. Also, what are your tips on sorting Lego sets? So. First off, I would say absolutely. Winnie the Pooh is worth it at full price. It, I believe it's selling for $100. It is retired. So if you get your hands on it, it's it's a great set. It's, it's a set that's going to go up in value. So tying back to investing, this is one of those sets that I think will increase in value. Uh, and, and the reason I say that is because when you look at these types of old sets that are very popular with people's history of growing up and they have that tie to it, it's it's something that they want. They just don't know they want it now. So a lot of times people don't buy it right now. And then five, 10 years later, they see it and they're like, I forgot that was there and I want it. That's where that secondary market really gets capitalized. So I would say absolutely buy it. I actually have Winnie the Pooh in my backlog. I bought it for my wife a couple years ago. She just hasn't built it yet. And right now it's just continuing to rise in price. But I don't know if we're going to hold on to it to resell. I think we'll still probably build it. But I would say definitely get it. As for tips on sorting Lego, I don't think there's a perfect system for it. I think everybody has their own special, unique way of sorting. I personally break them down by color. I have bins underneath my city where I have broken them down by color. Ultimately, I would like to break them down even more and get it down to some pieces that are separated. So I would have just overall colors and then I would be able to break those down into smaller little organizational patterns. But right now I just don't have the time or the spatial area for that. So eventually I would love to, but that's my best tip on sorting is everybody's got their own way of doing things. Mine personally that I've found the best for me is, uh, color and then i also do little things like break out pieces that i know i'm going to use for like mills plates or things like that or upcoming projects until i get as many as i need i i will sort them separately so those are all the questions from this past week and i really loved answering those so thank you all so much that was a lot of fun i really enjoyed answering those i hope you all enjoyed the answers as well as learning a little bit about me. So if you did, if you want to be featured on our next Q&A, drop, drop a comment below and we will include you in our next one, which will be next Saturday. And for now, 
you know what? Tomorrow is the Super Bowl, so we're going to take tomorrow off. We will see you Monday. We got some big things planned. Thank you all for joining us. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Give this video a thumbs up. Remember always to comment. And thank you all so much for your continued support. As always, stay happy, stay joyful, spread kindness, share love. This world needs it. And thank you all to the LEGO community who have joined us. And I will see you all Monday. So thank you all and stay creative.